I felt some type of way, Chan, because they FaceTimed me sweating. I was you know trying to, they, first they, of all, I was trying to get you at the crib. <laughs> yeah, they wanted yeah. me to go yeah. hoop. But it's about, they's like, hey, yeah, we going to go hoop. Wait, hold on. How we jump right into your sport? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's go hit a baseball. Or let's go do some things that we don't. What you mean? Boy, that's what I do. You pitched a baseball, Tracy. Listen here. You ain't. You ain't step up to the plate. You ain't get. The, you ain't hit the curve. <laughs> Ryan, my best sport is baseball, bro. Basketball is my third sport. Tracy, that's a lie. You better. T Mac. You better T-Mac. baseball than T-Mac. basketball. T Mac, you're a Hall of Fame basketball player. Bro. My best sport was baseball, bro. If you. Hey man, <laughs> listen, we, bro. We just started too early. We, yeah, we, we yeah, just yeah, started yeah. the show too early. Matt came on here with heaters, telling these stories. This man is one of the greatest scorers yes. in basketball history, and he goes, "I'm a better baseball player." That's like Tom Brady coming to me and being like, "Honestly, I'm a better golfer than I was quarterback." <laughs> I love. I love, I love, yeah. I love no, you're not. I love when the I'm world doubted. tells you what you are. I love when I'm doubted. Hold up. Let me listen. Welcome to the pivot, man. Uh, you really need no introduction, T Mac, to all of us who know, but Tracy McGrady, seven time All Star, seven time. All NBA, uh, 2017 uh, Hall of Fame inductee. I mean, your resume, man, it precedes you, but also the respect that people like us have for what you were able to do in different places, on different teams with different supporting cast, man, was absolutely phenomenal. For all the people who watch the show, man, we appreciate you. DraftKings, um, Happy Dad, our sponsors, thank you so much. We got Freaky Freddy sometimes. Freddie Flowers on most. Yes, sir. Freaky Freddie. Channing is definitely. They only called me Freaky, Freaky Fred because I was a freak of nature. You was. Like, it ain't got nothing to do with you nothing was. else. No, oh, he's nasty. You what? Nah, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm just a good old wholesome Florida boy, hey, like T Mac. Hey, yeah. like, hey, man, but like, like Freddie T always says, man, uh, anybody can podcast, but not everybody can pivot. And this is truly uh, a big pivot for us because T Mac has already started lying. You know, a lot of times, We've used this show. <laughs> We've used this show to let people be vulnerable and and open. And it seems that when they sit down with us, the honest doesn't the honesty come out, Chan? Like, you know, we've seen so many people, Michael Beasley, Shaquille O'Neal, like they sit yes. down, man, and we get down to like the real heart of who they are. T Mac yeah. started lying. He started lying from the jump. <laughs> This man walked this in the man, door line. This man sat down. <laughs> this man just sat down and told us that he was that basketball. Wait, he didn't say it was his second sport though. Third. third. He said, ba- "T Mac, what's your first two sports? Football, <laughs> basketball, baseball, and football, bro." Wait, you you were right, at, right you now. I can go on the football field on one knee and throw sixty yards, bro, easily, easily. Right now. I go out right now and throw 80 plus on a mound. Baseball. Okay. So here's my other question. T Mac, here's my other question though. Right now, if I set you at the top of the key and just told you shoot a basketball though, would you not be better at that than you are doing those other two things you just said? It's natural. All three of them, it's natural. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's it's natural God given ability, bro. I do that easily. Right now, I could have not played baseball for, I didn't play baseball from my junior year to 2013, mm-hmm. right? That time space, I never, I didn't play baseball. Bro, I went out there, I was throwing 85, 88. Your cousin, it was your cousin CJ that you said that, yeah. that, that taught you to pitch, yeah. right? And then, and he yeah. passed, so that it was kind of him passing and you said, I want to go. That, Right. Tell so us that, a little bit about that. So my my uncle CJ, when oh, I was uncle, younger, okay, I got you. uncle, cousin, yeah. I mean, he grew up in the same household. Um, he used to set up two pillows for me on our couch. And I, he used to have me throw, that was my strike zone, he used to throw the ball right through there. 
And that's how I got started. I started playing baseball at five years old. I didn't play basketball, bro, until I was like nine, ten years old. I hated basketball. I played football, I started at eight. You know, low league football, you know, down in Florida. That's that's what we do. Fred, right. tell you, that's that, like that's our thing. And you know, for baseball though, I played every single year and it was a natural. I remember I was eight years old when I first started pitching and coach was like, you know, he, he lined all of us up. I want you to run to a place where you feel like, you know, you want to you want to play that position. I ran straight to the pitcher's mound. And from that point on, eight years old, bro, I was a pitcher and it was just natural, right? Natural. Nobody taught me to, to throw a curveball and all that, but I had the fundamentals down from my uncle to be able to have the accuracy to throw Strikes. Why are you a basketball Hall of Famer? What? When did you have to choose? Because if you, if you real as you saying you real, I was real. It, but, it, but everybody why, but so in my hometown know I was better baseball player because when I when I was a junior, right, I had some problems with my arm, right, and baseball was really on the back burner because I started becoming so good in basketball, and then. Being that my name was, you know, a household name around the area, not outside of Polk County where I grew up, but in that in that rim, I was the I was the coldest thing around there. So I felt like I'm seeing all these guys on a national publication being ranked. I'm like, bro, how do I get there? And out of God's grace, a dude that was watching me from that that was affiliated with Adidas came down. I was playing spring football, about to be the quarterback okay. for my high school team. This man came down and took me off the football field. He was like, yo, been watching you. If you want to be affiliated with Adidas, you got to stop playing football. Okay. I stopped playing football. Basketball is my concentration. And I took off after my junior year and went to North Carolina. And it was basketball from there. So did, didn't you go to like a, a ABCD camp? Yeah. Too, though? And yeah, that was kind of like summer. when people started, started to notice you. Who, who all was at that camp? And what was it about the way you played and the things you did there that took you from you know, like the locally yeah. known big time athlete to a guy that eventually goes straight to the league. So you know what, man? It's all about opportunity, bro. You know, like nothing changed with me. It was just the opportunity presented itself. So after my junior year, that's when the guy um, presented the ABCD camp for me. And this is where all the like top national uh, high school guys are playing. And all I kept hearing when I got there is Lamar Odom. He was ranked number one, right? He was like, Ranked number one and ranked number two, but he was a 6'10 point guard, 6'10, 6'11. Right. I'm like, God damn. Right. I ain't never seen that. You know? Yeah. Back then, if you was the tallest cat on your team, they're going to make you the center. Mm -hmm. Real talk. <laughs> so, That's real. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, 6'10 point guard. I got to see this. Because I'm 6'7, six, 6'8 six, at the time. I, I got, you know, point guard skills. I ain't 6'10. I never seen that. So he was the first cat I seen, I, I played against. And he was cold, bro. I was like, God, nice, bro. Um, so I held my own against him. But going into that, it was like, bro, this is what I've been waiting on. This is an opportunity that I've been waiting. They had to pull teeth to get me into this camp. I was the last guy enter, enter, entering this camp. Had the number uh, 175 jersey that they gave me, like the last cat in. And, bro, nobody ain't know who I was. Like, I was just miss. I was all out of place. Didn't know what the hell was going on at this camp but got there and wrecked shot, you know what I'm saying? Came out of that camp to be the ranked number one player in the country off of one summer. It's crazy, I, I, was reading that, I was reading that as well. You're going from 175 to one, Yeah. but you mentioned Odom. Your task was to shut down the number one guy. That's how you got on the scene. He was the target. He was the target, because I kept hearing about it. I, ain't, I didn't care about nobody else. I want him. Like he's the dude I want. Cause y'all, if, if he he's getting all this this write up and all the publications, and I'm seeing him, you know, everywhere, and all this, you know, uh, ESPN and all these uh, writers, you know, ranking these players, and he's at the top of the list. I want him. You know, that's crazy, Chan. Especially when we have football players, his question is always about a dog, right? Like the that that yeah. certain yeah. mentality that make you go get somebody and. And you know, T Mag, you've played other sports, but you know dudes that play football and do other things. They like, we watch basketball. And it's like, oh man, basketball player soft. Like so and so hurt his shoulder and he got carted <laughs> off in a dang wheelchair. Like, what's wrong with your legs? You know what I'm saying? Like, I see dudes rolling on the ground 
And I'm like, oh man, what, what happened to him? And he get up and they pop his finger back in place. I'm like, what they got to do with your feet? Right. You know, <laughs> but I think when we don't, when you think of superstar players, especially superstar scorers, mm -hmm. right? You don't think defense. Mm -hmm. You don't think I want to go out here and show these people that I'm gonna check Lamar Odom, the number one player in the country. Mm -hmm. What what was it in you that said, this is how I'm going to get on the scene? Upbringing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up in, in, in Central Florida. Where I grew up, it was the probably worst drug-infested neighborhood, you know, in that area. So, grandmother was a janitor, right, at my elementary school. Mom was a housekeeper at Disney, right? That was my motivation. My grandmother get, waking up every morning, five o'clock in the morning, going to be a janitor. And my mom doing the same, driving to Orlando. My motivation, you know what I mean? So being that I grew up in that type of environment, the shit that I seen every day and was around every day, right? And the, the, the livings of my condition and seeing my grandmother and how she was grinding and my mom, those conditions, it, it programmed me to to want uh, better. Right. And that's when the grind, it, 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 it was a nonstop grind, bro. Like, that was my focus, you know what I'm saying? And I knew how to compartmentalize, hang it up with my friends, but also going to get this work. Bro, you was an ISO guy. <laughs> one on one. I had, I, had, like, I had a little bit of that. <laughs> now, a little bit. Shit, especially if we got to Orlando now. Them, them Toronto years, yeah, you was a system player. <laughs> you were Hall of Fame off ISO. Like, wh what is that like when you know, in a game, you know, when they pass this ball in, they about to give it to me. And, bro, I done seen you before. I watched you play all when I was a kid. You get them up like that. Get out the way. What's that feel like knowing that if you don't score, this team can't run? Man, you know what? That's that's years and countless days of playing in the park. I grew up playing in the park. I was always the youngest, playing against you know guys in my neighborhood or around the area that was always older. So the toughness came from that. Uh, the skill development came from that. The competitive nature came from that because they ain't take no pity. You know what I'm saying? When you play on the blacktop against you know guys that are older and that. You know, and, and some of these guys out there got game. Yeah. Like these these dudes are nice and they'll knock you on your ass and they ain't trying to help you, you know, get off the asphalt. Yeah. So learning and going through that, that shit was easy. Cause the work was being the work was put in. You know what I'm saying? So when when you get to the NBA, it's open, it's it's open, right? I mean it's it's Endless opportunities for one-on-one -on -one situations. Mm -hmm. Court's big, you know. I know who's who's gonna help, who's not gonna help when I'm driving. When I got somebody ISO, I study these guys so I know what moves to make, what to do on certain guys, how to attack certain dudes. It's just being a student in the game, but that shit was easy because the work was already put in. What about that pressure of being the number one scorer, knowing that if you that you have you have it's bro, you have to ball true. or your team's gonna lose. Yeah. Flat I mean, out. It's it's my job, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's it's my job. I can't complain about that. And at, at some point, shit, that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got what I wanted. You know what I mean? And I, you know, you you just gotta do what you could do. I was prepared for it. It's hard as shit. I ain't gonna lie about that. You know, to to do that year in and year out. You know, in the playoffs, averaging 43 minutes out of 48 minutes, and you got to score, you got to facilitate, you got to defend, like all of that. And that's why I think my body broke down because, you know, for, for many years, I had to do that for my team. Some nights I had to score 40 for us to win. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of nights I had to do that for us to win. You know, just, it was my job. T-Mac, before we, we'll come back to that, but let's, let's pivot back to go from 175 to one. The, the number one player, in the country, yep. go, going into your senior yep. year, the mindset, the confidence that you know you developed then, right? And then to go from there to numerous college mm -hmm. offers, you say you was going to consider going to Kentucky, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> you had the very uh, fortune of going straight out of high school to Toronto. Mm -hmm. What are the pressures, mm. you know, to to be drafted straight out of high school to go and play amongst men? Mm -hmm. Now you're a teenager going into the facility. What are those pressures like? Yeah, um, man, you know, 18 years old. And, um, you know, 
it, it was a difficult transition because I got drafted and went to Toronto. I'm from Florida, bro. You know, I mean, the coldest it get for us sometimes is probably 40 degrees. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And that's so, blistering. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Shit, we want to close the schools down <laughs> yeah, yeah. when it's that cold. Schools. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. to go to this, you know, place I've, I've really never heard of, um, didn't know what to expect. I mean, living on the lake, below zero temperatures. Man, legal age was 19 up there. Mm-hmm. And... You know, luckily, I went to a team that had some young players. Damon Stoudemire was probably in his second year, I think. Marcus Cammy was in his second year. Damon was in his third year. So I had some younger guys that I kind of could relate to. But, you know, having that pressure or having to uh, be something right away, I didn't have that on me. But you had the pressures of having to fit in and be accepted. You were the yeah. most talented player probably on the roster. I, I, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So, but the pressure that I had was put on me from my coach, right? Because if you drafted a high school kid, and obviously I'm not going to come in and know the game, right. you know, right away. For a coach to, you know, tear me down at the age of 18, you know, that was the pressure. Mm-hmm. Playing the game was easy for me. You know, because I, I, I'm athletic, I'm 6'8", I can handle the ball. I already got a feel for the game. And I, I'm used to playing with professionals. When I was back in North Carolina, I used to go to uh, the Tar Heels and play against some guys all the time. I used to go to Duke and play with them guys right. all the time. So playing the game, I knew how to play the game. It's just really understanding how to be a true professional, um, how to prepare myself every day. But the coach to tear me down, saying this and saying that to the media, and I'm reading and hearing this stuff, I'll be out of the league in three years. Like, bro, give me some structure. There was no structure for me, right? right? So that's why it was, it was a rocky rookie season, man, because really? of the pressures that you know was put on me from my coach. But when I got out there and played, shit, it was the, the game was just an easy flow because I had a feel for the game. I'm listening to you talk about transitioning yeah. to the game. You mentioned the way your mother worked. You mentioned uh, your grandmother. Mm-hmm. Um, when I think of an 18-year-old transitioning to be a professional, I do understand the strains of doing your job. Mm-hmm. There's also strains of living your life, mm-hmm. right? When when I was 18, bro, I was a I was a freshman at LSU, mm-hmm. where I could make mistakes, I could live, I could do all these different things because I had time. Yeah. You almost don't have time when you are in your position. Yeah. You're in Toronto, you're away from Florida, all those things. What was the life transition like for you? I had a different mindset though, bro. You know what I'm saying? When I was, um, I go back to my senior year, when I left Florida to move up to North Carolina, I stayed in the house with 12 other guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And this is me being number one player in the country at this time, right? So I know in this house, you know, some of these guys, you know, have a problem with me being at this list because they've been there before. They, they've been here before I even got there, but I come in and I take their place mm-hmm. Of, of, you know, being that guy on the mountaintop and, and everybody is praising and talking about, right? Took a little bit of their shine away. Right. So I understand that, you know, what's going on, what's being said. But again, my mindset is different. Dog, we, our house was probably 10, 15 minutes away from North Carolina Central. Okay. Their ratio was like 11 to 1. It was mm. Cr- mm. crazy. Mm. <laughs> crazy, mm-hmm. right? Crazy. <laughs> you like that, huh? Hey, he, mm, mm. Listen, crazy. <laughs> he, you're right? in his area not too mad. Be careful, dog. <laughs> so you got Durham, you got Duke right here, you got North Carolina uh, Tar Heels right here, and you got NC State. So I'm surrounded by all these colleges. So my teammates on their free time, these guys was on these campuses. Me, I'm down in the basement. I'm watching the game. I'm studying, right? So I'm locked in. I never partake in none of that. You know what I mean? So my mindset was on a whole nother level because I wanted to get somewhere and I had, you know, my motivation. I told you, my mom and my grandma was back back home on their grind. Yeah. So when I got to the league, again, I'm not one to, to, to go out like that. But when it shifted, for me, is when the coach, you know, started making all these comments and I started getting frustrated. And as an 18, I'm like, man, fuck this shit, man. Yeah. So I started, you know, hanging out. Again, I'm, even, I'm not even supposed to be out, although, in Toronto, the legal age is 19. 
So I'm out in the city enjoying and, and realizing, oh my God, Toronto is an amazing city. I got homeboys that would get Victory Monday in Pittsburgh <laughs> and catch a flight to hey, Toronto. Hey, I'm like, whenever oh I played in Buffalo, we go across the border. We had to go, we had to go see that Toronto now. <laughs> Say, oh my gosh, Toronto's a dope city. So I started hanging out a little bit more in Toronto. Um, but luckily, man, and thank God, you know, a sh another shift came when the actual coach got fired and my assistant coach took over, Butch Carter, who was Chris Carter, receiver. That was his brother. He took over, had some structure, willed me in a little bit, and you know that's when I started taking off and and you know excelling and becoming that player I wanted to be. Did, uh, did the real fun start in '99 after Golden State trade events? I mean '98 after Golden State trade oh, events to the team. Listen, bro, fun ain't even a word though. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time, we went from like. Damon Stoudemire, you know, Marcus Camby, some young cats, mm -hmm. to Charles Oakley, Dale Curry, right. Muggsy Bogues, D. Brown, Kevin Willis, Antonio uh, Davis. Right. Oh, and me and Vince, but we was the little brother. Mm -hmm. We was the little brother. So, yeah, talking about fun, oh, sh yeah. Yeah, we, we had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a, we had a great time. But, but what is that like, bro, being, being 18 years old, and get, what was it, 12 million Adidas gave yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, it's 12, 12 or 6. Yeah. So they gave me 1 million and I went crazy. But I was already 21. You was 18 with 12 million dollars. Yeah. What was, like, what was that like? Shit, it was life changing, bro. That's <laughs> what was... you work for, too. <laughs> but, but no, but bro, it, you could buy anything you want. You can buy the whole Polk County. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, man, it was... I can't lie, man. I mean, it was an amazing thing, bro. To, and the first thing I did was take care of my mom and my grandma and my dad. You know what I'm saying? I, I took care of all three of them. But, you know, I received my first check. It was like $500,000. And I wanted it in cash. I remember <laughs> I, being in, I, was, I was in my room, bro, upstairs. And I just threw all that money on the bed, bro, and just waddled in the bed, just rolling around in the shit. I couldn't believe I was like, damn, dog. You rolled around with somebody else? Or you was like, Come on, man. <laughs> I'd have rolled around with somebody nah, else. I just, that's, I, that's, I just, that's, that's, that's nah, no, it's thing. just me and 500,000 making love. That's it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it in Canadian dollars? Like, how does that part of it work? That nah, the, no, no, this is, no, this, this, this is less. This is when money. I was in North Carolina. This is before oh, I went to oh, Toronto. Wow. Oh, this is before I got drafted. Yeah, no, I'm mm. thinking ahead. I was thinking about, I eventually wanted to get to that part. Part, how do you guys get paid being an NBA team in Toronto? You know, how do, how does that part? They converted. Yeah. Oh, we, they we just had, converted. Yeah, so. yeah, it got converted. Yeah. What do they have? Loonies. Yeah, yeah loonies and toonies. Really? <laughs> and they'll pay you loonies in Canada. Yeah, I mean, shit. Yeah, you got to spend their money up there. <laughs> I don't know. That was a good question. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Question. I want to know how you yeah, know how you. how does it happen? Because in the NFL, we don't. That's yeah, right. yeah. Now we played in London. We they gave us shekels or something like that. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Is bro? it shekels? Pounds. Why, they, they pounds. Didn't pounds. Pounds. But they didn't pounds. pay you in shekels, pounds, Channing. You shekels? got the same check. But you get paid where you're you at. You get, up? you get taxed where you at. I've been locked up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. You, 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 you yeah. a straight edge guy. I'm a little bit off the edge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. We got paid in pounds. Hey, Mac. To go from, you know, and I, I, I guess every. I still remember Vince's dunk contest. And, you know, obviously you were a part of that. And Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and you were a part of that. But to go from that guy who we were just learning about, the athleticism was, was just starting to show to the guy you become in Orlando. You know, did, did you always feel that was the shots you needed? And when Orlando, when you became a part of the Magic, was that part of their conversation with you? Like, we know what you're capable of. And that Toronto wasn't necessarily the place you got to show it, but we believe that you could be X, Y, and Z. And that's kind of when you became a star. They didn't know. Really? No. They didn't know. What I did in, Toronto, in Orlando, they didn't know. No one knew that. No one knew that, right? I didn't show, I, I showed that I was athletic, I showed I was skilled, but that shit that was in Orlando was on a whole nother level, bro. Like I was doing shit that nobody did 
you know, since Bob McAdoo days. You know what I mean? Um, I was a third wheel. Mine was supposed to be yeah. Tim Duncan and Grant Hill. Mm -hmm. And then me, right? Tim Duncan, because, and, and this is allegedly, didn't sign because Doc Rivers wouldn't allow your spouse to fly on a plane for road games. That's why he didn't sign, allegedly. I heard of that. Grant Hill even told that story. <laughs> so, right. And we all know what happened to G Hill. Right. You know what I mean? So it was like, here you go, bro. You sign. Now, I signed the, the, the biggest contract from a guy that came off the bench was a max deal. Mm -hmm. So I was the first to do that. And it's like, you know, Grant Hill is out. Looking at you like, bro, you got to carry this franchise. Mm -hmm. So the pressure was on. Guess who ain't going to crack? I had to go put in the work, yeah. you know? And I'm not even going to lie. I surprised myself on what I was able to accomplish in terms of scoring. So I thought I was going to be like, you know, Scotty, Scotty Pippen, 20 points, you know, 6-7 rebounds, 6-7 assists, but not 26, average 32. How, how much of that, though, the motivation in that, came from being close to home. You're back in Florida, back in Orlando, mm. very close to home. Mm. The guy who wore number one before you mm. in Orlando, we all know what he stood for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Penny Hardaway. Mm -hmm. How much of having Penny, well, not replacing Penny, but wanting to be the best yeah. number one or magic player ever, yeah. how much of that was motivation and influence? So, you know, growing up in Central Florida and, um, you know, when Penny came to town, because I watched Penny, Penny at Memphis State. And when we got Penny, Penny became my idol. Penny became my inspiration because I saw myself in Penny. And when I had the opportunity to put on that jersey, I couldn't let my guy down. Because I, when I tell you, bro, I, you couldn't say nothing negative to me about Penny Hardaway. Like that was, that was my Michael Jordan. Like he, that month was cold. Real talk. Oh man, yeah. bro, he had it all. You know what yeah. I mean? The swag, just everything about Penny, I, I just love. And I couldn't let my guy down. So that was my motivation, and that's why I wore number one. Like my dog put it, he put it down in his jersey. I seen it in person. You know what I mean? I remember going to a playoff game when they was playing Miami, and Penny dropped forty two that night, and I went to his house. Now the first time I met Michael Jordan. I was in high school. Um, they were playing in the playoffs against Atlanta. MJ just killed them. So I'm in the back. You know, somehow my coaches, they pulled some strings and got me in the back. So I'm back there. Scotty comes out. Rodman comes out. You know, moments later, MJ come walking out, bro, and he was glowing, dog. <laughs> I said, damn. Oh, MJ glowing, bro. And it was the same. I went to Penny's house after that game, man, and it just had that same effect on me. I was like, that's my God, bro. I ain't know what to say, but to be in his presence just did everything for me. And then even when I got drafted, like I used to call Penny, he used to take my calls all the time, so we forever had that bun, and I still talk to him to this day, but that was my motivation, man, and I had to put it down for my guy. Man, it's, it's crazy to hear you mention those names. Like, even... Me sitting here with you, I ain't gonna lie, like, I, I still fan out about having this job. You know what I mean? When I hit uh, Gerard, I was like, hey man, you think uh, you can give me T Mac number? <laughs> I was like, you know, text him first and ask him, <laughs> but I'd like it. You know what I mean? And like, and like sitting across from you, I'm remembering moments and I was like, golly, this dude was different. But to hear you talk about MJ and hear you talk about Penny, you have that same sort yeah. of reverence yeah. for them. My favorite basketball player of all time is Kobe Bryant. Yeah. And uh, anytime I get an opportunity on this show to hear stories, whether they've been told or not, I just want them to be told on our <laughs> platform. Um, I was mad at you for like 10 seconds one time, right? You come down, you hit Kobe with the bink bink, yeah. my dog tripped, yeah. Yeah. right? Kobe oh, yeah. tripped a yeah. little bit, you hit the jumper. I was like, all right, now yeah. I got to hate T-Mac forever. Oh, he came back. He Tell, take take us through, man, what it's like after you hit him with it, then Cole comes down, that's to the dunk, slap the backboard, get the T. So me and Cole used to go at it, right? I mean, to, to take you even back, like, that was my brother. 
you know what I mean? Um, I think I was 19, Cole was 20. I, you know, when he was still living with his parents, I, you know, I used to go out there, I used to stay with him. You know what I mean? Me and Cole would sit in his room, he'll watch all these home videos of MJ, watch karate flicks. Like, Cole was different, bro. I mean, just com different than any other 19 or 20 year old guy that I've ever come across. Very intelligent. I mean, just he had he he had it all, and um, you know. So we 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 had that 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 thing, and we took a trip to uh, Paris, and uh, we you know had a great time over there. So we were competitive, you know, all the time. And when I when when I started becoming into my own as a basketball player, he noticed that. And then you got the barbershop talk. Who's better, T Mac yeah, or Kobe, right? right? Yeah. We, the, we the best two wings at that time. So yep. Kobe take heed to all that. He listened to all that stuff. So he wanna go out and prove a point. But so do I, right? So every time we faced each other, it was a battle, man. And it was like, what y'all need to do is just everybody just get the hell off the court <laughs> right. and let me and this dude just go at it. Because that's what it was. You know, I come down, I hit him with something, boom, boom, you know, make him fall. Make the jumper. He'll come down. Now, that exact same play, when he came down and dumped down there, dumped on the whole team, my job is to send Cole baseline, right? Don't let Kobe go to the middle. So send baseline, help's supposed to come. Help didn't come quick enough. And he <laughs> <laughs> he saw, he saw yeah. <laughs> Help didn't come quick enough, man. He dunked. Yeah, and you could tell, like, he was mad as hell right. that he fell because he smacked the backboard so hard off of that dunk. But, oh, uh, man, it was, you know... For, for Cole, man, it, it just, it brought the best out of you as a basketball player that you didn't know you had inside of you because you know this dude is built different, right? He's, he's built different, and you know he's going to come at you every single play. He's just relentless, but you got to match that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't match that, you're going to have a long-ass night. And I loved it. I, I, I relished those opportunities. Kobe had a 20-plus year career, and in an interview... He was quoted as saying, you are the toughest opponent he had ever faced. He's played the numerous players over that time. Like, what do you think when he says that? It um, it just, it validates me as, you know, certified hooper. You know what I mean? Regardless of what anybody says in terms of what I didn't accomplish. For him to state that just lets me know. I was that dude. Yeah. Right? And... No, I didn't win no championships, but it takes a team to do that shit. But when it comes to an ind individual player and who I was and the work that I put in, that's all I need to hear. What, 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 to that same point, like, because it's funny, because you didn't win a championship. Charles Barkley gets killed for it. Like, he, you know, he's on TV every day. Yeah. And he gets killed for it. What, what's your proudest accomplishment? Because you have so much, bro. Yeah. All stars, all this, all that, scoring champion and all. What, like, it's Kobe's, not even a, a stat, but like is Kobe, you know, talking about you something? Or like what is the thing in your mind that one of the best basketball players of all time, this is what this is what I I pride myself on. The respect for my peers. Yeah. Means sure. more to me than anything else. So what, them talking about it or are you them them letting the world know. Mm -hmm. And that dude right there was he was cold-blooded. Like, he was nice. He was that dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, b because when you talk about all these accomplishments in terms of championship and, you know, Western Conference and going deep in you, it takes a team. It takes an organization to do all that. You know, when people talk, oh, he ain't making it out of first round. Well, God damn, I averaged 30 in the playoff series. What else you want me to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they don't talk about that. So... When I get the respect from the guys that competed against me every single night, nothing else really matters. Now, I, follow, I follow you with that. Not, nothing else matters. All, for me, because um, everything else is media driven. Yeah. The accolades, mm -hmm. you know, those votes, like that's all media driven. For sure. Right? And you can look at a guy and say statistically, yeah, you belong here. But a lot of times the stats don't show everything. Right. It's the respect from your peers. And that's the same thing that, you know, I battle when they talk about the Hall of Fame. You know, but this isn't about me. I, I just understand that yeah. mindset. But I did want to ask you, though. Uh, you say you didn't win the championship. We understand it's a team sport. 
would you trade the Hall of Fame for a ring? Depends on who I am as the player. Mm. That means a lot to me. I respect that. Right. Yeah. If right. you know what I mean. Right, right. Like, you're gonna be ring chasing at the end of your career when when right. you dang near when you dang near assistant you coaching. Right. You know, right. you know, hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, it depends on who I am as the player. Now, if you're talking about prime T Mac, hell yeah. Right, right. Because I know if I'm going if I'm prime T Mac to win that championship, I'm destined for the Hall of Fame. 100%. Mm -hmm. You dig? So absolutely any day. But, but if you're not gonna surround me to be on a championship team, nah, I'm, I, I want that. I want the Hall of Fame. That forever. I want the Hall of Fame forever, right. Right. because in my prime, you didn't surround me with that. So now I'm chasing at the end. Nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> it's so crazy, Mac. Man, That's like right. I think, you know, we've had we've had so many players answer that question the other way, right? We've had so many players because it's like the it's the cliche answer. It's also like the team answer where people say, oh my gosh, like he's such a leader. Like I think Tom Brady said he'd trade one for two or something like that. And people eat that up. We sat with Ken Griffey. Fred asked Ken Griffey a very similar question. And he was like, hell no. Nah. And he was like, man, it's a lot of folks win championship. Like that's team. He's like, it's only so few that can write Hall of Famer under their name. But that's why I said what I said. It depends on what player I am. There's a bunch of cats that has championship rings that I ain't really put in no work. Right. You know what I mean? So just like if I would have won that ring with San Antonio, I mean, I I, I want to go through the journey, bro. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I want to go through the ups and downs and ebbs and flows of a season, an 82 game season in the playoffs. Like it's rewarding at the end when you win that championship, going through that shit, I don't want to just, you know, hop on a, a team and I ain't really contributing. Hey, shit, nah, man, fuck, nah, I ain't with that. <laughs> nah, that's real. I ain't, I ain't with that. Listen, I know you don't want to take a break. This is riveting podcasting, but we got to tell you about DraftKings. Any new customer using the promo code PIVOT that makes a football wager using $5, you get $200 in free bets. And I'm so excited about this week. We got the Pennsylvania matchup of two of the best teams. Okay, maybe one of the teams not doing so great, but one of the teams is really good, and the other team is my team. Can't wait to see what happens. Oh, man, you like that one. I like this Arizona-Minnesota. This wide receiver matchup, one team doing their thing. The other team had high expectations. But if you are in a state that doesn't allow sports betting right now, you got to do the DraftKings Daily Fantasy. That's why I hit them in the head all the time with the fantasy. Hey, Chan, I'm in London, but I still love my same game parlays. Denver, Jacksonville, hmm, hmm. What I'm going to pick, though? We already know what you're going to pick, Freddie T. You're going to grab your device. You're going to download DraftKings Sportsbook app, and you're going to place your wager. You're going to use the promo code PIVOT, put your $5 down, pregame money line, and you will win $200 in free bets. Now we got to get back to these hoops. If we're talking about the Spurs, it's Tim Duncan and Popovich and all that. If you're talking about the Spurs, to me, it's 13 points in 33 <laughs> seconds. Right? You know, like everybody, like everybody points to the, the Reggie Miller New York Nick yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh, this is amazing. I don't think enough people talk about that moment for you. I think they do, man. Every every year. Okay. You know, ESPN, they they put it out there. NBA, uh, NBA they put it out there. They in China, I have it's they have a day for me Shut in China. Yeah, they, they have a day for me in China for that. So it's no, nah, it's, it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing, man. Of um, how they you know keep rolling it out year in and year out. So I appreciate you that. Hey, no, but but, but bro, <laughs> what what happened? <laughs> like, like he had thirteen. I was gonna say yeah, he rushed through it like yeah, I have a day and all. Like <laughs> bro, like like walk us through that thirty three seconds, man. You know, one thing about great players is just the unknown, bro. You know what I mean? And that comes from the preparation and work that you put in. So you don't know you're going to have moments like that. But you know if you put that type of work in, you're going to do something spectacular on that, that, that basketball court or that football field because it's the manifestation of your work. So going back to that game, I was struggling in the beginning of that game, right? San Antonio is in-state rivalry. They have a hella defensive team. And it's always a battle. So I was struggling shooting the ball um, throughout the course of that game. But, you know, that that last 
you know, minute of that game, something just clicked, right? Something clicked, and it was just the will to take over. And, you know, once I hit the first three and the second three, which was a four-point play, yep. I knew it was over. Because I'm 6'8". Tim Duncan, some say I'm 6'9", but Tim Duncan <laughs> is seven foot seven one. To pump fake, get Tim Duncan off of his feet, land on into bump into me, and I still get the shot off and it goes in. Oh shit, it's destined for us to win this game. <laughs> right. And if you go back and look at the last uh play, when they threw the ball into their player, no one touched him. He tripped and fell, and the ball rose to me. Basketball guys is talking tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go win this game, bro. Right. I'm not even thinking about trying to tie this game up. I'm dribbling the ball up the court and I'm looking for my spot. Head down, pop, game over. It's just like that. What's so crazy, Mac? Is like, I was I was the work hard guy. You know what I'm saying? I had to I had to be in the building before everybody else. I had to leave later than everybody else. I had to get more treatment. You know, I'm old, so I had the DVD that I popped into my little first iMac and it said, and my kids be walking by, Daddy, you gonna talk? Yeah, one second. You know what I mean? Like, I had to, like, I had to be that. It's so different when you do talk to greats. And it's not just people saying that you are great. Like, you got the accolades. You you can look at, look at the statistics. You could see the film and all of those things. But you speak of these things so casually. Mm -hmm. When you look, when you look back at your career, do you ever sit back though and, and truly appreciate your accomplishments and appreciate the people you played against and played with and really look at that journey as a whole? I do, I do. Um, I talk about it a lot actually. Um, you know, just how I even got started. I mean, just the guy coming and taking me off the off of the, the football field and giving me the opportunity to go to ABCD to really, you know, give me that exposure. Um, that I was looking for. Uh, a lot of people helped me along the way, but the number one guy, man, I gotta go back to Kobe. You know what I'm saying? Taking that trip over to, to Paris with him and being around him, you know, in a different in, in a different environment and seeing him work, like we'll go to the gym and I, I, I go to this story, I tell the story all the time. So we get there, we stayed at Disney and um, I hate roller coasters. I, I I don't do roller coasters, bro. But this guy is so competitive, and he tests you and 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 see what you're about. We just finished eating, and he's like, "Yo, let's go get on this roller coaster." And I'm looking at this roller coaster, man. Hell no, nah, <laughs> no way. <laughs> I, I don't do roller coasters. It's like, man, come on. So you know, cold. Start calling you all these type of names. <laughs> Uh, I, I ain't built like that, Kobe. You ain't come from where I came from. I can't allow you to talk to me like this. All right, let's go. Get on this roller coaster. Oh, man, I'm, we get off. I'm sick as a dog, bro. I, hey, man, I'll see you later. I got to go upstairs, bro. So anyways, um, throughout that day, I told Cole, I say, bro, I'm about to go to the gym, about to go work out. And he hit me with, man, what you working out for, bro? That's the off season, man. He did, like work out in, during training camp. Fuck, you working out for now? Let's have some fun. I'm like, what? No way this this guy saying this shit to me. So I go upstairs to chill for a bit, right? I come down, go to the gym. This motherfucker in there sweating like a motherfucker. <laughs> bro, he in there again sweating profusely. I'm like, I just started laughing. I'm like, okay, I got it. So. From that point on, I knew who I was dealing with, right? right? Yeah. I knew my guy. He trying to always get the edge on you. And, you know, I, I just knew, you know, what type of person he was. But I love it. to be around him and see how he worked and knew his mentality, his preparation, everything, that shit rubbed off on me. Because when I got to Orlando, I was grinding. I grinded like I'd never grinded before, bro. I was waking up five o'clock in the morning going to the track. I was working out three times a day. Three times a day, right? So when when you know people talk, ah, oh, he wasn't a leader, he he got poorly. I always came into training camp in tip top shape. You can't you can't do that what I did on that basketball court without mm -hmm. being in shape, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? You keep you can't physically do that shit. To do that every single night. No, you can't do it. So that grind every single day in off season, that shit came from Cole, man, and how he grinded. You think, you know, when you think of 
And this kind of goes into the accomplishments, but also the the human side of it. Freddie speaks about injuries mm -hmm. a ton. Mm -hmm. I've gone through my thing. I think Channing's had, what, 17, 18 17 knee surgeries. Knee surgeries. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. ACL, micro fractures. That'd be a while like Kenny Smith. Yeah, and so when you know when you are at the height of your uh, profession, yeah, the way that you are, yeah, and you start to get these debilitating injuries, and you feel yourself no longer mm -hmm. being what you were, mm -hmm. right? How difficult is that for you living it every day and knowing knowing you were here? You know, that's like. You know, I was like here, so that fall wasn't that bad. You know, it was like, oh, I'm good. You know what I mean? But for you, man, to feel your body basically betraying you, yeah. how did you deal with that? No matter how humble you are as an individual, you know, we're all competitors in our, in our own, you know, sport, in our own way. And we all have an ego, right? You can't be out there if you don't have no ego. It's just what it is. That's a devastating blow to your ego, right? Because now it's like, you in a certain percentile of talent and, and of greatness of less than work. one percent for you, right? You you in a certain percentile, but now when those injuries start happening, that shit drops you all the way down, and it's like I won't even say you're normal, bro. It's like you, <laughs> you know, some cats that you feel that there's no way you should be guarding me right now, no way you should be in front of me right now. Oh. Fucking rip your heart out if I was, you know, healthy and on top of my game. It's like, coach, I have you sitting on the bench right now, but damn, I can't even get by this cat, right? So that was devastating in a sense that I love being celebrated. I love hearing MVP chants. I love to have 20,000 rocking, bro, in the arena. But that shit is quiet. Wow. It's quiet. And when I had micro fracture surgery, <clears throat> it was probably the most depressing time of my life because I'm fighting every year to try to win a championship. And I'm with Houston. And finally, I'm like, damn, we got the team that I've finally been, been waiting for my whole career. Shane Battier, Ray Frost, and got my, you know, my guys, and we got run our tests. Oh, I'm about to compete for a championship. Hell yeah. Knee blew out on me. Mm -hmm. Done. Go around, second, third, fourth opinions. You gotta have microfracture surgery. Now I know the history of microfracture surgery. It's not good. It's never good. I know I'm done. And I ain't I'm not gonna get that that chance of competing for a championship. So I had to move to Chicago, man. I had microfracture surgery. And I'm laying in my room in my bed, bro, in this CPA machine, just moving my leg, you know, to help the, the blood circulate for eight hours out the day. My team is still playing. They played Portland Trailblazers the first round. Brandon Roy's kind of banged up. They beat Portland Trailblazers first round. We play the Lakers and Kobe. Take them to seven games, bro. Y'all got hurt, like, beginning of that series. I'm not even there. And we take the fucking Lakers to seven games without me and y'all. You know how devastating that was, bro? To me, I was, I hid for almost a year, bro. Just not wanting to talk about basketball, see basketball. Like, I was, I was depressed, man. And I'm, I'm asking, like, damn, why is this happening to me at this time? All the work that I put in, you know what I'm saying? I've been true to this game, right? It, 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 this is stripped from me. I never had that opportunity again to win this championship that I dearly won. And when I got the nomination for the Hall of Fame, all that shit wiped away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, just no, telling you. How did you deal with that, though? That's crazy to say, just injury, you know, your team is right there. Like, how did you deal with, cause you say depressed and you know, the, the mental health thing. Like, how did you, how did you deal with that? Cause you say you hid it for a year. I had to, you weren't supposed to hide for a year, bro. You Tracy Nah, crazy. man, I, I was, it was a bad time, bro. Like, Why? 
Why? You you saying why was why? You gotta understand, man. This is this is something that I truly wanted, that I worked for. I put my body through a lot of shit to chase this championship. You see what I'm saying? Like I put my body through a lot just for that. And for that to be stripped from me, I, I felt like, you know, it, it a part of me was just, it was, it was gone. Hmm. And it 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 slowly, it was a slow leak of ejection from the game of basketball. Right. Slow leak. Because I knew I wasn't gonna be that guy no more. Right. Hmm. You say the, the Hall of Fame changed all of those wild oh, questions. Man, <laughs> what? <laughs> when I got nominated for that, I was like, oh man, okay, this okay, thank you, God. This is this is rewarding. Thank you for giving me this for, you know, the work that I put in in this game. Right. You know, at least I was able to achieve something you know, that a lot of people can't say they they was able to accomplish. Right, right. I want to ask you, T-Mac, because uh, I, I see the joy uh, that you have on your face when we talk about Kobe. Yeah. Talk about your relationship, yeah. the whole entire thing. January 26, 2020. Go through that day. Man, Take you have no day. idea, bro. You have no out. Listen, my wife had an event, and I was about to... Um, I was about to do a uh, daddy-daughter dance for my oldest daughter at my wife's event. And I'm sitting at the table. And one of my wife's friends come to the, uh, while she's coming to my table to talk, to, to tell me, she blurted it out. Kobe Bryant just died in the helicopter crash. My manager who managed Kobe back in his earlier days is calling me at the same time. I'm, I wasn't, I thought the shit was a hoax. And she just said, are you okay? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, Kobe just died. And bro, I just, I dropped the phone. And mind you, it's hundreds of people in this room. They don't know what's going on. And I, I get up from my seat bawling. Like, I can't believe this shit. I, I cannot believe, like, I just told my man yesterday, one of my, one of my boys here, I say, bro, I can't believe Kobe gone, bro. Like we was talking about this yesterday. I say, I can't believe Kobe is gone. Like my dude. And he said it. When he was with the Lakers, I got to Orlando because we were so close, right? His mindset was, you know, on winning championships. So our relationship went like this because he was doing his thing, trying to win uh, championships. Hell, I'm just trying to be relevant and win scoring titles to do something with my team. Um, so we kind of got like this, separated a little bit, and didn't stay in contact that much. But once we both retired, because his girl was playing basketball, my boys are playing basketball, and we roll in the same circle, we're, we started reconnecting, you know, having tournaments at the same place, mm-hmm. and we texting and talking often, right? So I, I, our bond is coming back. And to, again, that shit stripped me, man, from, you know, having those, you know, endless conversations and repairing our relationship. And, you know, that was, yeah, that, 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 that was devastating. It, and to this day, it still is devastating. I mean, I can't believe that, you know, he and his daughter and those other ones are gone. So, yeah, it's yeah, tough think, pill to swaddle. Yeah, I think, and I, like I told you, he's my favorite player. I didn't know him you know, like you did. And I think that affected everybody so gratefully Mm -hmm. because when you have someone who was one of the greatest players that ever lived, and you mentioned him in retirement, we started to get to see the human. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like people were learning that, you know what, this dude who was so hyper-focused on championships has a heart for people and and is a good dude and he wants to bring people in. And reading about you in retirement and you saying, you know, you want to teach young people how to build wealth and you Mm -hmm. want to teach them how to invest and Mm -hmm. you want to do these different things to give back. You've now started the OBL Mm -hmm. and having all these things. When you think of yourself either going forward, even right now, who you are, as you say, like the the 20,000 don't scream anymore, right? The, The things you do that affects 
people's lives, they aren't always posted or those things aren't always the things that are talked about. When you think about yourself post-career and what you've been able to accomplish, how proud of you of some of those things? You know what? I, I've always been one to just, you know, put my head down and do my work, um, regardless of who's seeing it, you know, um, because I, I, the work that I put in is really just, where I got in my career is based off of someone helping me, right? Giving me the opportunity. And that's just been instilled in me, right? Throughout these years, having the opportunity to start OBL for cats that, you know, has been overlooked, uh, had some doors closed, told them they wasn't good enough. I wanna give them that opportunity. I, I think, you know, there's only 400 and probably 50 players in the NBA. There's an ocean of talent out there that I think people can respect and appreciate their talent. And that's why I started OBL and give them that opportunity to do that. And on top of that, to learn and, and, and understand these guys' stories and tell their stories. Um, you never know, and, and this is so crazy and true, I, I didn't know, going back to my high school days when I was a junior, I didn't know that guy was watching me. That came and took me off the field. I didn't know he was watching. I was doing my, I was just being me, doing my thing every single day. I've been awarded, you know, for the work in the community that I've been doing. Now, I'm not one to call the news cameras or call this player and, and let them know, hey, I'm doing this, y'all come out and film. I'm, that's not me. Mm -hmm. But people are watching, right? Right. So you, I used to be like, Receiving an award, you know, I, I appreciate it. You know, I'm just, that's just me. I, I, I just do things just to do it because it's, that's the type of person I am. I feel that, you know, someone gave me that, that opportunity, I want to give it back. And I don't care to be rewarded for it. But I think now, even more so today, I'm appreciative that somebody is paying attention that's giving me that, that award and yeah. giving me that recognition because the shit that's going on in our society. Yep. So I'm more, you know, accepted to it and understand that shit needs to, it, it needs to be said and needs to be done what I'm doing in the community, what we all right. are doing in the community because it's bad out here, man. These kids, the, the tools and information that they're receiving is so wrong, mm -hmm. right? And social media is killing our kids. You wish you would have done more when you played? Because now as, as older guys, We've done more we in all 40, what, just, what sense? Just done more with the community when you know what I'm saying like the old guys and we do a lot. Yeah. You know we give back. Yeah. But when I I'll say it because I I left as a sophomore in college like yeah. I was 21, like I didn't I was just trying to make a check. But now looking back, I wish I did more when my when my face and my voice meant the most for our community. I don't think it's, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I I I, I don't have regrets. I, I never have regrets. You have no regrets. I don't have no regrets. Tw you right now. You wouldn't give any advice to 21-year-old Tracy. Yeah, but I don't regret it. I don't I don't have any regrets of the things, the, the path that I took to where I am today. I don't have no regrets about that. Because I think where I am, where I'm sitting today, I was destined to be here and to go through all that shit that I, I went through. I learned, it was just a learning process. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just it's steps, you know, that, that I had to learn, different things I had to learn to get to where I am today. So I don't have any regrets of, of what I did, of what I've been through. You know, we usually- I don't, I don't, my, I don't think my message would have resonated back then to where it is, you know, today. Yeah, we usually talk about the biggest pivot. And I think you've told us so much about those things that we've kind of gotten different pivots in your life and different decisions you've made uh, that have brought you to this point. So I think my last question would be for you as we wrap, what is the the one adversity? What is the one trial, the one thing that you feel like you went through that maybe at the time wasn't necessarily what you wanted or what was the best from you, for you that you learned the most from and has helped you be today's Tracy McGrady? Dan, that's a great question. Um, 
I, I think for me, is understanding how precious life is. Honestly, man, I was in Orlando and at the top of my, my, my game, top of my career in the prime, shit, ain't, ain't nothing bigger than in Orlando than me than damn Mickey. Only thing is Mickey Mouse probably, <laughs> only thing right. bigger than me in Orlando. And one of my high school teammates, who was my best friend at the time, I used to take him on all my trips, you know, where I, wherever I go, I'll take him with me. And um, I was on the road somewhere and I got a call from my cousins to come home. I was somewhere around town to come home. So I, I drive home, this is like early in the morning, I drive home and my, I think my brother and my cousins, they all sitting on the, uh, the staircase. I'm like, yo, like, what's going on? And they, nobody wanted to tell me. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? And I was like, yo, man, well, E got killed last night. And when I, when I heard that, bro, like, that shit ripped my heart up. It ripped my heart out that my best friend was gone. And the crazy shit, we were playing phone tag, you know, back and forth. So I never got an opportunity to return my guy's phone. So from that day on, man, I just knew oh, life is too precious to be out here acting stupid and doing crazy shit, man. I gotta, I gotta put my head down, bro, and really concentrate and understand, you know, what I want and how I want this shit to go. And um, it took some time for me to get over that, you know, losing my best friend, man. And but that was a turning point for me. How did it change you? <sighs> well, going back to the story of how it happened, I won't tell it. It, it lets me know that I got to be careful who's around me. Mm. Got to be careful who I let, you know, close and dear to, to my heart. And that's what changed me. Uh, so I kept, if you ever see me, you're gonna see the same people every single time you see me. Ain't no new, no new friends, none of that shit coming into my circle. I, I don't roll like that. I don't roll like that. And, and that's just the way it's gonna be because of that situation. Mm -hmm. Wow. T-Mac, I know you're a student of the game, man. I know we're about to wrap this up, <clears throat> uh, but I can't let you go without asking you you watching current players. Yeah. Who's T Mac OG certified? <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Who the top dog in the league? <laughs> little ISO. I mean, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, top yeah, dog. You're, you're, ISO. You're, you're top guys. It ain't gotta be three, four, five. It'd be yeah. whatever you want to say. So what are we talking? We talking like the LeBrons? The guys and... you like to watch. Just current guys, right? Like now. I don't think, I don't think, I mean for me. Not like look, we know he could. Yeah, like, he, he, like I'm talking about the the, the dudes, the guys, that are, guys, the guys, the guys that are going to take the Steph, yeah, Katie, yeah, the guys are going to take that the, the mantle generation. from them. Yeah. Right, right. Luca, Ja, yeah, Ja is very special. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we ja. we had ja. Ja's not big. Like nah, we we did. Nah, so. Ja puny man, but he athletic as shit. And he got, he got yeah. that, he got that. That's why I love him. Uh, so Luca, Ja, Giannis, um, D Book. I'm, I'm gonna tell you somebody who else that, because the team he plays for, he a dog, man. Trey Young, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah. Trey Young's a dog, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, some some of the guys, man. You know, what's, you know what's crazy about all of those dudes, Channing? We're more athletic than all of those people because they they had to play what? basketball, what? right? They, they had to get into oh, a sport you where you could learn, like, there you skill. Go. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when we tossed Freddie T the ball when Freddie T was eight, he was already hitting with that pop-pop. Let me ask you a you question. You know what I mean? He had to wait for people to... Let me ask you a you know, question, though. To... Who's the greatest football player in the game? Right now? Who's the GOAT? Tom Brady. Is he athletic? Mm. <laughs> no. you know, I Is he athletic? He I was going to say Randy Moss. Huh? Because you, what, what, listen what you just said. Oh, us, us three, we we way more athletic than those guys. He just is Tom Brady. Athletic? No, Tom Brady is not athletic. He's the right? goal to but here's the thing, though. Tom Brady, Tom Brady can play baseball. Tom Brady can golf. Let me. His let, skill. Let goes me ask you other, a question, Ryan what, Clark. What, T Mac? Give me a football player okay. in today in in. 
Give me a football player that could leave the NFL and come into the NBA and be a perennial all-star. Who? Julius Peppers. Get the- T. Higgins. <laughs> T. Higgins. Come on, bro. T. Higgins, T. Higgins had T. North Higgins. Carolina offers, yeah. Michigan offers. Here's the, here's the thing that you're doing, T. Mac. T. Mac, this is what you're doing. What? What you're doing Mind is. You, y'all have 53 players on a roster now. But T. Mac, you know what you're doing? What? This is what you're saying. We're not tall enough. Like. I'm not saying that. You gotta have. I'm not saying that. Other than CP3, you ain't gonna be no six. It ain't no six foot Hall of Famers in basketball. AI? Six one. AI, they, hell no. Nah. I've been around AI. Man. He's taller than me. I, I wouldn't get AI 6'1". <laughs> <laughs> Probably better. Hey, so, AI stay, okay, Chase. But, but, but get no. soccer. No, no, no. Soccer, basketball, we play, we could do, we play damn tennis, badminton, pickleball, any sport you, and you put you us in the, put us in the Olympics, right? Uh, uh, I got you. Uh, no. Here, T-Mac, no, I got my question you. for you. Okay. I got you. My question for you. I got you. T-Mac, I, I, I if we you. do, if we do, if we do a skills test, right? If you say, if you told Odell Beckham Jr., right, that he could take one step and test in the vertical, you think he wouldn't jump higher than every hooper? No. Bro, we got, there's, no. Byron Jones jumped 44 with his how, feet together. How tall Stand- is Nate Robinson, bro? 5'8". Exactly. He's 5'8 and jumps out of the gym. Man, I'm not hearing you, T-Mac. I'm not, I'm not. Here, let me end this discussion right now. Please end the discussion. And I have to let you because my producer is looking at me. No, we good. No, hell no. Y'all ain't got, no, we good. (laughs) I would take LeBron James and put him in y'all sport and he'll be the greatest tight end. I'm too tough to fake when somebody 170 pounds pushes me and I'm 6'8", 250. I'm not going to fall all on the ground and do all this. Come on, bro. Into the camera, I'm not doing you that. You got to stop that. T-Mac. You trying I, to tell me? T-Mac, you, I'm not doing it, that. Stop it, bro. You know you know damn well y'all got some tight ends and, and some wide receivers that was probably cold as shit with, 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 with some of them tendencies right there. You better stop it. That's a couple of them. You better stop it. <laughs> you better stop it. <laughs> Basket. Football, football has created a lot of basketball players. That's I mean, my listen, thing. I could take Russell Westbrook and put him in the football. Now him, I don't know if he could play it, but he definitely got the mentality. He got the mentality. Oh yeah, he'll choke the shit out of somebody in that foul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Westbrook, he'll choke yeah. the shit out of somebody. Yeah, I fuck with I, I like I like yeah. Westbrook. Because y'all, I mean, again, y'all have more. Y'all got 53 guys on the roster. It's just 12 of us. Cause it's twelve. Cause God only give five of y'all in the world six eight. Like you have to, Tracy. The reason that you are one of the greatest players ever, bro, is cause you're six eight with freaking long levers, jump out the gym, damn quick, explosive, skilled. Skilled. I didn't say that we was more skilled than them, Channing. No, skilled. <laughs> Don't leave that out. I ain't say we was. Don't more... leave that out. Yeah, I got those attributes, but skilled. If I was to tear my knee up. And I couldn't blow by nobody or jump over nobody anymore. I still can get my game off. Skill. Right. That's why I say that all of y'all ain't great athletes. Most of us. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, dog. Hold up. Limitless. Biggest to me, cap pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. On the mission, got me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Nigga, send me cap pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. On the mission.